Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Kim Davenport and I am the communications manager for Tacoma Historical Society. Those of you who've been watching our virtual meetings are probably getting familiar with my uh, dining room in my historic Lincoln District house. So I'm coming to you from there again during the pandemic. Uh, it's a great pleasure today to have uh, Judy Carlson Hulbert, who is the author of the recent book, The Wind Will Not Stop. Uh, we're, I'm very excited for this conversation after reading that book and uh, really getting excited about the way in which she's made some very challenging moments from Tacoma history accessible to young readers. This was uh, the first book published by the uh, Chinese Reconciliation Park Foundation and really goes a long way to helping more of Tacoma residents, especially maybe those younger residents, learn about this important history of the Chinese expulsion. So welcome, Judy. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for having me. And uh, let me just start with kind of an open-ended question, which is what brought you to this project initially? Well, I think originally it was I, I borrowed uh, the Lorraine Hildebrand book, which was probably one of the first books written about this. And um, when my daughter, I, I had a friend uh, whose daughter was in my daughter's preschool and she loaned me the book. And you know, that was probably about uh, 35 years ago, 30 years ago. And um, I had never heard of this chapter. In, and I went to Pacific Lutheran University. I grew up in Oregon. I had no idea that this happened to the Chinese people and that it happened right here. And I was shocked that something like that, so dramatic, uh, could have happened and, and I didn't know about it. And, and I was also struck with the parallels between, um, say, Nazi Germany and what was happening here. Um, you know, sort of on a, on a smaller level, you know, people weren't um, you know, maybe two of the Chinese people who were driven out were killed. Um, but, you know, it, but it was the same idea. It was the same idea that there was an economic depression. There had to be a scapegoat. Who was that going to be? And um, in this case, it was the Chinese immigrants. Yeah, so it, I, I, I am moved by how long you've lived with this story, uh, because that's that, that's a, my relationship to a lot of Tacoma history stories. I grew up hearing about them, you know, 30 or 40 years ago now, and now I'm researching them myself and, and exploring them more. And it's it's really important to keep telling them to new generations. So it's, right. it's important work. So what brought you then to uh, to where you were, you know, approaching publishers and actually thinking about, you know, getting this book finished? Well, it was a long process. So originally, so I have a background in theater and I really wanted to write this as a play. And I was particularly interested in um, sort of perhaps bringing it to people's attention, young people's attention. I wanted to write a play for young people, um, but I was very interested in sort of that reconciliation project. This was before the reconciliation a foundation began, but I was interested, how do you say you're sorry? And why is it important for us to acknowledge that and, and say you're sorry? Because I certainly wasn't around in um, 1885. Um, and yet I had heard stories, and you probably have heard this too, where people in the um, Chinese people knew about Tacoma and they would, I, I can't even remember where I heard this, but they would be driving past in cars. So, you know, in the 60s, 70s, and they would say, no, we don't, you know, bad things happened there. And so, you know, there are long-term ramifications of, of what happened in 1885. And, okay, so you know, I, I wanted to make that um, a play and um, I didn't get very far. I, I didn't know how to present that. Um, and so then I decided, well, I'll try a, a novel. And I, I like, I have worked with young people a lot. So I've tried, um, so I said, I'll, I'll, I'll write, you know, something for that middle age group because, you know, some of those things are really, some of the topics are kind of difficult. And that's so why, too young, I wasn't sure I, I could handle that, but middle grade, they're pretty sophisticated. So uh, then I started, and, and that was at least uh, 11 years ago. So it's been a, a long time, and um, 
because I had written a lot. I had uh, written for magazines and I'd written plays, and but I had never written a novel. And that is a whole other uh, form. So um, I actually ended up writing three completely different books. And this is the third book. Um, you know, many of the events were the same and some of the characters, you know, Mayor Weisbach was in all of them. And, um, but it was three different books. Um, and each time I learned more and more about the craft of writing a novel. So what we see now is what I've learned. Well, and it really shows, I, I didn't realize the length of time you had spent with this project, <laughs> but, but, but reading the book, it really, it felt extremely uh, well thought in terms of every, you know, detail of the plot. And it, 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 I think your, your time with the project and your work into it really does show from a reader's <laughs> perspective. Um, one of the things that, you know, fascinated me the most, I'm often talking to authors who are writing nonfiction mm -hmm. in, after researching history, and I've, I've written a lot of nonfiction as well. Um, but your book is, is fictional. You know, a lot of the characters are fictional. Uh, details of the plot are fictional. Uh, but you place that within these real events from Tacoma history, within the moment of the, the expulsion of the Chinese. So I'm, I have a few questions related to, you know, how did you, how did you do that and how did you put that together? So uh, the first one is, how did you conduct your research into specifically the, the expulsion of the Chinese? Well, I, you know, I was writing, I, I mean, I was reading those any book that was out there about the Chinese experience in the United States. And, you know, even reading those books, I still didn't get all the facts until, I mean, just recently I found out, and I don't know, I probably just skipped over these in these books, but I realized that, you know, there was the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, which sort of barred all immigration. And that really wasn't changed until like 19, in the 1940s, and then there were only like 106 Chinese people allowed to immigrate. So it wasn't until like the 1960s that immigration was opened up. I mean, that astounded me. But um, getting back to the research, so I read all of these books and, um, you know, particularly the Herbert Hunt series of books, the, um, you know, his series on Tacoma history. And because those were written in, uh, 1916, they were so close to when the events actually happened. And, you know, they even like sort of had, I don't know, interviews, but had quotes from some people who experienced that. Um, and because it was in the 1916 and it was so close, I got a sense that, you know, for us now, it seems like everyone realizes that was a horrible thing that happened. But in 1916, they were still thinking like, like the, these people were still convinced that that was a good thing. And for some, what I thought sort of silly reasons too, you know, um, I think the, the one uh, man who helped to expel the Chinese and then went up to um, uh, Ang uh, Alaska and became like a Senator or something. I, I can't remember his name, but he said, oh, it's not that I hated the Chinese. No, it's, it's that they were so hardworking and smart that they soon would take over our country. So it was a good thing that we did on that day. So he wrote that, you know, looking back. Um, so, you, you know, the, the mindset hadn't, uh, I mean, it was, you could still see what they were thinking. Um, so those books were really interesting. Um, so, and, you know, again, I went down to the Pacific Northwest room in the main branch library and looked at microfiche of the, some of the newspapers that were um, put out then. And those two, I mean, you can see that um, those, the, the editorial writers, they were not uh, balanced or unbiased. Some of them were extremely biased and extremely hateful. And, um, and it's, it's a fascinating thing to, to research. So that was just sort of to research what was happening here. Um, it also was a whole different uh, challenge to find out what life was like in 1885. And so many things I had to research, you know, anytime I used a phrase like, okay, was okay in the vernacular at that time, you know, I would have to check that. And I'm sure there are things that got by me, but, you know, sometimes 
you know, in a book, in a novel, I realized you have to get people from point A to point B. And like here, we could just pop in a car, but there, back then you have to either allow time to walk there or figure out some other mode of transportation. So that was fascinating. Yeah, and it, that really leads me right to my next question, which is one of the things I was most impressed with in your writing is it, it, it you have a, a wide variety of characters, both real and, and fictional, mm -hmm. um, you know, ranging from, you mentioned Mayor Weisbach and, you know, obviously a name that most people who follow Tacoma history would know from that moment in our history. Um, you have fictional characters who are children, uh, people who are Chinese, people who are Caucasian, uh, people of different social standings. And one of the things I was most impressed with is their, their lives felt authentic, that their, their daily experiences felt authentic. So I was very curious how you uh, put some thought into that and researched you know, what clothes they might be wearing or the ways in which people of different classes interacted with one another at that time, which might be different than now and, and things like that. Yeah, um, that's an interesting question because, um, you know, again, this was my first novel. This was my first historical novel. So I had to try to figure out some of those things. Um, I found looking at pictures was a fascinating way to do research. Um, you know, there were photographs back then and you could look at their clothes, you could look at their faces. Um, it, it was very, you know, um, I, I like that very much just sort of to imagine. And, and again, then there are these little stories that you pick up, you know, and, and there is a, a slight book and you probably know it by, um, is it Ruby Chapin Blackwell? It's a 32 page book about, um, being a little girl in Tacoma in that period of time. And she has a few mentions of the Chinese people, um, but it also gives a little tiny bit about her life. And uh, like one question that I always had for all of the characters was, you know, where would they go to the bathroom? And not that that was in my book at any point, but you know, that was, you know, it was sort of a, um, you know, you have to know where water came from and how the, uh, the sewer system worked and different people were having different water suppliers at that point. Um, and, you know, one thing about history, and I'm sure that you know, is it's fun to look around Tacoma and think, well, that was there in 1885. Or where is this? Like they talked a lot about um, springs bubbling up off the hillsides. Like, well, where are those springs now? They must still be there. Um, Things like that were really fascinating to, to read about, um, you know, and, and, you know, there isn't a lot about the Chinese people, you know, the, uh, there isn't lots, there aren't lots of diaries, people weren't interviewing them, but um, there are pictures, and then again, I think I could use some imagination, you know, if you're not, if you haven't been in the United States for very long, how do you speak English and um, things like that? Yeah, it really, it, it all of those details leapt off the page for me. And it, it's, I mean, and I think it's critical in a, you know, we don't necessarily expect that in a, in a nonfiction book to have that level of detail. We maybe are staying on, on the main topic, uh, but in a novel, it, it, you need that to pull you into these characters and identify with these characters. And I, I, I was, I was very, very pulled in. Uh, I, I will admit I literally read the book in one sitting, uh, which is rare for me. Uh, so that's that's I was I was pulled in. I couldn't couldn't put it down. <laughs> oh, that's I'm not I love just to hear that. Saying that. <laughs> love to hear that. You know, another um, interesting. There's a book called Time and Again. I don't know if you know this book. It's about a man who goes back in time in New York City. It was written in the 1970s by Jack Finney. It's a great book, um, but it was set right around the time that my book was set. So in 1885 in New York. Um, so that, and I know that that was meticulously uh, researched. And, and so it was, I could sort of gather little tidbits from that book as well. Um, it, it was really interesting. And then, you know, one of my characters, uh, she and her family come from New York City. So that was sort of in the back of my mind as well. 
I, that was a character I really enjoyed. And, and I think it was a, a good choice from what I know about that moment in Tacoma history that, you know, you talk about the Chinese being relatively recent immigrants, but a lot of, a lot of Caucasian people in Tacoma were relatively new to Tacoma, right? Even if maybe their families had been in the United States for a few generations, so many people were new to Tacoma in 1885. Right. Well, and, you know, and it was interesting that, you know, I read this fact that in the 1880s, there were 7,000 people in Tacoma, 700 of them were Chinese people. That's a big percentage. It is. And it's, it, 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 you really weave those stories together. Uh, this again, kind of leads me into my next question. Um, so most of, of the focus of the book is, you know, is being told from the perspective of, of children. Um, and these clearly were fictional characters. Okay. Uh, how did you develop those characters? And, and why, um, I guess I'm asking two questions in one, but yeah. why, what do you think it is that a, a story being told from the perspective of children, what, what perspective do you think that brings to this, this tale that you were weaving? Well, one of the interesting things I think is that in my first two versions of the book, uh, the protagonist was a young girl and she and her father moved from Wisconsin with the grandmother to Tacoma and um, she had a friend who was a boy who uh, had a bunch of brothers um, in Tacoma and so I had done you know in each total version that I had written of a book I had like 20 or 30 revisions so um, by the time I got to my third attempt, I said, I, I have to sort of switch things around. So I made the boy the protagonist, the main protagonist, and then the girl, um, his friend. Um, so that sort of gave me some fresh insight. Um, but then because I'd had these uh, characters in my head, um, you know, I, I, you know, it's just sort of like, where do you get any idea? They sort of just like sort of, oh, well, let's try this and then let's try this or this would be fun or this didn't work. Um, you know, originally the boy Ty, who's the protagonist, um, he had a lot of brothers, um, but then, you know, that got unwieldy. So he ended up with two in there. Um, and here's a, here's a funny little thing about the writing of the book is that um, by the time I did this third version, I was sort of so tired that I made all of the names as short as I could. So um, Ty, T-Y, that uh, one of the Chinese characters is Li, L-I. Um, it's like uh, Eva, E-V-A. I, I just, you know, the thought of writing out Benjamin every time or Jonathan was you know. <laughs> that's that's understandable. That's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 protagonist is so wonderfully um, open eyed about everything yeah. he sees, and it's it's one of the things that really I think pulls you into his character. And and in part, I think it came just from my perspective. It came from you know he doesn't have a great family situation, so he's right. kind of alone. Right. Uh, you know, and there's no adult necessarily guiding him in any particular way. So he's just free to see the world as he sees it. Yeah. And, and in that world, he doesn't necessarily see that the Chinese people are, are bad or contributing any less than anyone else to, to Tacoma's community. And it's, it's a, it's a great character. The, you know, one interesting thing about that uh, character is that you know, so I have him, he has this very mathematical mind and he, you know, is very good in the math um, division, but he probably has dyslexia. And one of, I got that little tidbit, you know, so, so many, you asked where I got some of these characteristics or how, well, um, when I was down at the Pacific Northwest room, I was reading the newspapers from 1885 and they would sometimes put in the class rankings and I saw one, I think it was a boy, I can't even remember now, who had like a 50%, was at the very bottom. And I thought, oh, how embarrassing for that kid to be at the 50%. And then I thought, well, what if he couldn't, what if he had dyslexia? You know, like they, they had no idea what dyslexia was. So what would that be like? And that would sort of further um, sort of isolate him from his class, which is sort of what um, I was thinking of, um, you know, his main goal is to just 
get through life, get through his interactions with people uh, without having to be noticed. Um, but yet on the other hand, then he can explore the countryside and, and down at the, the waterfront. And um, so, but you know, the interesting thing about doing research is that you find these little divots, I mean that divots, uh, little snippets of, of character. And that's, I thought that was really fascinating. And in the Herbert Hunt book, I also read that um, at one point in the development of Tacoma, um, these boys had been on a sand hill and the sand hill collapsed and at, you know, at least three of them, I think, died. And so I was able to take that little incident too. Um, that's the fun of research, I think. Yeah, and it, it really makes the characters feel real and it, mm -hmm. it makes them feel genuine and authentic to who they are because you're infusing them with all these real facts that- Things that, that you couldn't really make up. I mean, no. like without, I mean, I wouldn't think about um, a sand hill. Like why would there be sand hill? I wouldn't even cross my mind, but when it happened- <laughs> There you go. Borrow. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Steal? Borrow? Oh, no, no. Uh, bar borrowing from your research, pulling yeah. from your research. Yeah. Being inspired. Uh, and, yes. And and I just, uh, the, the wonder of that character that he, he he's an underdog. Um, you, you root for him and he finds, you know, in a world that can be kind of forbidding to him for a variety of reasons, he finds real friendship with with Chinese people and so we see them as you know warm-hearted giving kind people in, in in juxtaposition to what some of the adults are saying about that population so it's really it's a powerful way to present it um what do you when, when you put it out there and you finish this project which was such a long project what and, and it's published now and you can hold it and it's tangible and you can put it in the hands see, of I have it right here <laughs> that's right <laughs> see I I would I would still have mine but I gave it away to a younger person because that's <laughs> that was the right thing to do. That's right. Um, so, what do you hope that readers, especially young readers, uh, I mean, obviously, I enjoyed it, and I'm an adult, but uh, it's aimed more at a younger audience. What What do you hope they take away from reading this book? The, um, you know, so on the back of the book, I, I and throughout the uh, book, I quote Chinese proverbs, um, which was really fun to research. But on the back of the book. Um, I have, we must learn from history, which is a good uh, theme for the Tacoma Historical Society. But um, I really want young people, all of us really to learn the history so then we can learn from the history so that maybe when other situations are arising, like some other, you know, economic crisis happens and we're tempted to find a scapegoat because that seems to be a natural human inclination. We can go, no, you know, this has not worked out well. And I think the joy of books is that, you know, you go on this journey with the characters and hopefully, you know, characters learn and grow in the book. That's sort of, uh, you know, what I've learned, a hallmark of a successful book is if people have changed in some way. And then as a reader, you too are changing. And so, you know, I mean, one question, you know, that I think in the very beginning I thought about for myself is what would I have done in a situation like this? What, um, you know, would I have helped? Would I have protested? Would I have just ignored the whole situation? What, what, what is it to me that, you know, a segment of population goes? So it really, it's like, well, what would I have done? And I think for young kids, especially to think about that, you know, what, what do you do? And um, what are the long-term effects of doing something that is unjust? Um, you know, and uh, I think one thing that I learned that, uh, and I, it took me several years into the research that, you know, Tacoma was harmed by this, that there, the people in the East Coast heard about this event, and they were not happy. Uh, you know, I mean, they, it seemed wrong to some people in the East Coast. And um, so, you know, perhaps Tacoma didn't get some big contracts, they were hurt financially. Um, you know, so that's a, you know, besides morally wrong, it, it hurt the city in, in many other ways, I think. 
Plus, we don't have a Chinatown, really. You know, the cities that kept their Chinese population have a Chinatown. Yeah, yeah. Thinking again about that that idea of what what a, a young person would take from reading this, I think um, it was clear that it was two things were clear to me as you reach the end of the book and and all of the events are, are coming to it to a to fruition really. You know, yeah. the situation's been set up that this is going to happen, and we have these young people wrestling with these things. It was two things were clear to me. Uh, one was that uh, Ty uh, and his friends didn't have a choice about how to act because they knew that what was going on was wrong, uh, but also that it took a lot of courage for them to do what they did. And I think that's a good lesson, you know, for people to realize, I, I think it can be easy to look back in hindsight and say, well, obviously that was wrong. And clearly I wouldn't do that now, right. but it, no, I think you're right. You know, if, if you were there, it's important to think about what you would do and that it might take a lot of courage to do the right thing. Yeah, it's our, you know, the, one of the struggles of writing this book is um, how do you have a happy ending? This did not end well for the Chinese people. It did not end well for um, many people in Tacoma. Um, how do you have a happy ending for a novel? Um, and every novel doesn't have to have a happy ending, but I wanted it to have a happy ending. And, and so the only way that I could think of was that Ty could have learned something and he could have grown and um, other people could have learned something so that he couldn't prevent this from happening this time, but perhaps in the future, because of being empowered by what he did and saw, um, he could make a difference in the future. And he did make a difference in this book too. He actually he did. helped. He did. But as a child, there, there was no way that he could stop this major event being no. created by adults. Yeah. But, but you're right. If, if we can, it's, it's a wonderful sort of moral to take away from the story yeah. that if we can learn from our past and we can learn from what we've been through to potentially not repeat those, those same mistakes. Yeah. It seems hard though. I don't know. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it, does. <need> books. <laughs> it does. So uh, I have a question that I, I didn't tell you I was going to ask, but okay. it pop popped into my head. Um, what did it What did it mean to you that when you um, ended up being finished with the book and ready to publish, that that the foundation would be the publisher? What 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 do you think is significant about that? Why is that important? Um, first of all, it uh, it was very touching to me that um, this foundation uh, agreed to publish it. Um, you know, not only was I able to then you know sort of get it out into the world, but to have it endorsed by um, the actual foundation that is sort of, its goal is to do what I hoped the book was to do, which was to bring reconciliation. You know, it's the Chinese Reconciliation Project Foundation. So it brings, you know, it's to bring people together. And um, so that they, that they were behind this was, really, I mean, it meant so much to me. Um, and it enabled it to happen. You know, it's interesting that um, I have a friend who's a literary agent back in New York. And I said, well, how long, like if I were to go the traditional route, get an agent, get it to a, sell it to a main publisher, how long would it take to publish? And she said, well, at least 18 months. And because of the Chinese Reconciliation Project Foundation, and they had gotten a Tacoma Creates grant, I mean, we had this book out within five months. So by the time that they, you know, it took me, you know, 11 years or so to write it. But by the time they said, we'll do it, boom, five months later, we were, it was, you know, a real thing. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, and they have been supportive and all along the way, they uh, sponsored a wonderful launch party. It, uh, um, they have been a joy. It's wonderful. It is wonderful to me that it's a Tacoma product, you know, yeah. written and and funded and and published here in Tacoma. It, it's it's our story that we need to reckon with. And my uh, a friend of mine, Joni Joachim's, uh, painted the cover. Uh, that's her grandson. This is my neighbor here. You know, this is the waterfront. This is a Tacoma artist uh, with a Tacoma painting. 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It, is there is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to talk about to help get people excited about about looking into your book? Um, I I I mean I think you did a very thorough job. Um, you know, I would just want to pose the question um, and and to say you know to welcome any ideas on how we can get it into the the classroom. And I don't know if there are any of the people who are viewing this. Um, I would just be, I would be really curious. I, I, this is, you know, every step of the way we are learning and we don't know how to get uh, the attention of the school board. So, um, but that's ultimately our goal. You know, it, it's not to have it made into a major motion picture or to be on the New York Times bestsellers list, but it's to like get it so that people can read it and, um, and talk about it so kids can read it and talk about it. So um, I, I, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, let's throw it out there and let's yeah. continue, let's continue that conversation. And, and, yeah. and I can speak on behalf of the Historical Society that we, we would be happy to help try to make that happen. Great. Get it into the hands of more, more children and, and more adults, frankly. Yeah. Um, it is available all over town, correct? It is. Yes, and on Amazon in in a paperback form or kindle um so yeah um it just would be fun it would be fun to hear um hear what kids are would think about the topic you know uh, kids are very very bright and very you know they're thinking all the time i'd love to to hear their thoughts yeah yeah absolutely well, I will, um, when I uh, prepare this to share online, I will add at the end some resources where people can find out more about the Chinese yes. expulsion. In addition to reading your book, there's some great online resources that have been produced by various groups in Tacoma. And, and that's the thing. And over you know, the 11 years that it's taken me to write it, more and more things, you know, periodically I remind myself to check, um, you know, like there is somebody put up uh, like a map you can follow the course of how the Chinese were driven out and um, that and then there are also um, like what that area looked like maybe back then and what certain areas in Tacoma looked like in 1885 and now and that's fascinating too. It is. It is. Yeah, I will. I will share all of that along with everything we've shared today. Good. It's it's wonderful. Wonderful to talk to you. I yeah. Again, I know I've already told you this, and I've already told the camera this, but I I very much enjoyed this. Um, it's rare that I sit down and read a book cover to cover in one sitting, and it really pulled me in. And I I hope that that kids experience it the same way. Oh. Um, and it's just really a pleasure to talk to you about it. Thank you so much, Kim. Yeah. Thank you. Great getting to meet you. <laughs>